When you learn to drive, roundabouts can seem very daunting. And quite often learning to judge them safely can be the last thing that clicks into place before you take your driving test. This video covers the basics of roundabouts and is aimed at beginner to intermediate level. Although some more advanced learners may also find it helpful. In this video we'll take a look at some of the most common types of roundabouts. We'll share a few tips along the way from how to approach them, learn discipline and forward planning. Roundabouts come in different sizes and different layouts. Your driving instructor will help you understand the more complex roundabouts in your area. Later in the video we'll take a look at how to assess a roundabout and how to know when it is safe to enter the roundabout safely. So if you learn to drive and find roundabouts a bit of a challenge then I hope this video helps. Approaching roundabouts always use MSPSL routine. Let's start off taking a look at turning left at this next roundabout first exit. So turning left, checking T rear mirror left door mirror. Because we're on a dual kydri, I'm also checking my right mirror too. It's very important to be aware of anything happening around your vehicle at all times. Signal left and position the left hand lane, reduce our speed and prepare to give way to traffic coming from our right. I'm going to select second gear because visibility approaching this roundabout is very good. It's all clear, so we don't need to stop. Keep to the left, new speed limit sign, check our mirrors after exiting the roundabout just to make sure it's safe to get up the speed on a new road. Now let's take a look at a few different layouts of roundabouts going straight ahead. It's just a basic roundabout this one and we're going to follow the sign for Gateshead. It's a second exit. There's no road markings on the approach to this roundabout so unless road markings tell us otherwise normally pick the left hand lane to go straight ahead. Check our mirrors and going straight ahead we don't need a signal any approach. Keep well to the left and prepare to give way to traffic approaching from our right. So we enter the roundabout need to stay in the left hand lane and as we pass the first exit check our mirrors again and signal left. Another update on our mirrors and check the road ahead to make sure it's safe to get up to speed. This next roundabout we are going straight ahead. It's a second exit sign posted for the A184 Sunderland. We need a right hand lane for this one. So check our interior and right hand door and because our lane is going to split into two lanes we're just going to hold our position as close to the hazard warning line as is safe. Which will lead us into the right hand lane. The left lane only turns left but the left mirror as we exit will still be very important just in case someone chooses a wrong lane. It's all clear, stay in the right hand lane onto the roundabout so we don't cut across traffic turning left. Interior left hand door mirror left signal and exit the roundabout. When you learn to drive and encounter larger roundabouts it can be easy to get a bit lost on a roundabout and to forget when to start your exit procedure. This next roundabout is a little more complex so here are a few tips that could help. First of all, on the road sign, you could count the exits. If we look at the sign, we are going to take the third exit out of four sign posted for Marsden and Coast. We'll treat this as a straight ahead, we'll need the right hand lane. Also, the exit before us is sign posted for the town centre. So, as we pass the town centre exit, we know that the next one is going to be our exit. So we can start our exit procedure. So, using the mirror signal manoeuvre routine, we'll move safely over to the right hand lane. Putting plenty of mirror checks in here so I'm totally aware of traffic behind and to the side. As we mentioned earlier we're treating this like a straight ahead so I'm not going to signal on the approach. Where possible it's a good idea to look across the roundabout and to identify the exit you want to take. This will help you to plan the safest course throughout the roundabout. As I come on the roundabout, because I've got the right hand lane, I'm going to stay in the right hand lane. I'm counting the exits as I go around. And this will be the second exit. There's a sign for the town centre. 
so no one can start our exit procedure as we're past this exit. Interior mirror, left hand door mirror, left signal, make sure there's no one to the left and exit the roundabout. Let's have a look at road markings a little more on this next roundabout. We are going straight ahead to second exit signposted for the A1300 Tang Tunnel. As we can see from the road markings, we can go straight ahead to the A1300 from both lanes. But because we aren't overtaking, I'm choosing the left hand lane again. No signal on the approach because we're going straight ahead. All clear after this car. Stay in the left hand in on the roundabout. Check our mirrors and signal left as we pass the first exit. 40 miles per hour speed limit. Check our mirrors again and the road ahead to make sure it's safe to get up to speed. Now let's take a look at the roundabout with two lanes going straight ahead again. Now this time I want to overtake this slower moving traffic in the left hand lane. If you're learning to drive or just want to take your time, you're better off using the left hand lane. This will keep you in your normal driving position. However, once you become more confident and familiar with certain roads, you'll probably feel comfortable doing this. So I'm in the right hand lane, left hand mirror is very important here, as well as our interior mirror, we're looking out for motorbikes filtering through the traffic. It's going straight ahead, no signal on the approach, there's our gap to get out, stay in the right hand lane on the roundabout. Mirrors and signal left to exit, but exit in the right hand lane. Now we have finished overtaking, use our mirror signal manoeuvre routine and return back to the left hand lane when it's safe. Now let's take a look at a few different layouts of roundabouts turning right. Turning right you are normally looking for the final exit on the roundabout and you usually need the right hand lane. On this roundabout we are going to follow a sign for the time tunnel, it's a third exit. So on the approach check our interior mirror, right hand door mirror, signal right. There's no road marking so we need the right hand lane, reduce our speed, select second gear. Give way to traffic coming from the right, there's our gap, so we enter the roundabout, stay in the right hand lane. So pass the second exit, check our interior mirror, left door mirror, signal left. Check our mirrors again in the new road. At this next roundabout we are turning right, following a sign for the Tyne Tunnel. It's a third exit. On our approach, check our interior right hand door mirror and make sure no one is overtaken before signalling right. Check the road markings in the approach, we need the right hand lane and reduce our speed. It's a busy roundabout so be ready to go when you get the chance. As we enter the roundabout, stay in the right hand lane. As we pass the exit before the one we want to take, check our interior mirror and left door mirror to make sure nothing is to our left and signal left. Now we have two lanes as we exit here. I'm not overtaking, so I'm going to exit in the left hand lane, which is our normal driving position. If I wanted to overtake so I'm moving traffic or I couldn't get over into the left hand lane, I could use a right hand lane to exit, then move back to the left hand lane when I had finished overtaking. New road, new mirrors, so I know what's happening behind at all times. When you're on a dual carriageway and you want to turn right around about, you normally have to change lanes. This next roundabout we're going to turn right, third exit, sign posted for Tyne Dock. We need a right hand lane for this one. Because we have two manoeuvres to do here, yeah, we need to get ourselves into a right hand lane nice and early. So check our interior and right hand door mirror, make sure no one is overtaken. Signal right and a quick sideways glance before moving safely over into the right hand lane. Cancel signal. Check our mirrors again for an update. And signal right in between the 3 and the 2 countdown markers in good time. As we mentioned in a previous clip, we're in a right hand lane, so keep updated with traffic to the left as well as behind. It's safe to go after this red car. 
So enter a roundabout, stay in the right hand lane. And as we pass the second exit, check our interior and left hand door and signal left. Check our mirrors again and then your road. Let's take a look at forward planning when you have two roundabouts very close together. When you have two roundabouts close together, try to plan out as you approach the first roundabout where you want to go at the second roundabout. This will help you to get into your lane earlier. Or you're going to turn left at the first roundabout and right at the second roundabout. So on approach, check our interior and left hand door and signal left. If we take a look here, we only have one lane on the approach and two lanes on our exit. So as long as we give way to any traffic approaching from our right on the roundabout, we have a choice of two lanes to enter here. But because we're turning right at the second roundabout, we're going to exit into the right hand lane. If you want to go left or straight ahead at the second roundabout, you're probably going to need to stay in the left hand lane. It's all clear. Exit into the right hand lane. Check our mirrors and signal right for the second roundabout. Scan the crossing for pedestrians and approach with caution. I'm not going to enter the roundabout here because my exit is blocked at the moment. So if we take a closer look to the right to plan our exit, we can see that we have a zebra crossing and that is why the traffic is backed up. This oncoming car will block any traffic on our right and allow us to get out. As I exit the roundabout, check the crossing is clear and that it is safe to proceed. Approach many roundabouts in the same way as any other roundabout. However, there is less space to manoeuvre and less time for your exit signal. So if you are turning left or right at the mini roundabout, use the appropriate signal on your approach, but don't worry about your exit signal. Steering accurately around the roundabout is much more important. You must pass around the central markings unless it's physically impossible. This gives other drivers more time to react. Try to avoid using the mini roundabout to make a U-turn, but be aware other drivers might attempt to do this. Take careful all-round observations before you enter mini roundabouts. Remember there's not usually much space, so there's less margin for error. This next layout of a mini roundabout is very common. We are taking the first exit. Some people may say to left and some might say straight ahead. There's no right or wrong here. Whereas you don't really need a signal on your approach here, it can really benefit you as well as the oncoming traffic. If we take a look at the oncoming traffic, if we signal left on your approach, they know for sure we are taking the first exit. So they pull out and block off the car on the right, which allows us to go. It's a first exit, so a left signal can't confuse anyone here. If you find it difficult learning to judge when to go at roundabouts, first of all, check what speed you are approaching a roundabout. The chances are you might be going a bit fast. Try slowing down a bit as you approach. This will give you more time to assess the roundabout safely and to make the right decision. Your driving instructor will advise you on this. On approach, where possible, try to anticipate the gaps in the traffic early. Roundabouts are designed to keep traffic moving. As you approach, aim to stop on a line, but if it is safe, keep going. We have to give way to traffic approaching from our right, including any traffic coming around the roundabout. But how do we know where the car coming around in the inside lane is going to go? especially if they forget to use a signal. Let's take a look at these two pictures. Look at the car on the left, how it is hugging the roundabout. The wheels are turned to the right, so this car is coming around the roundabout, and we would have to give way. Whereas the car on the right is starting to peel away from the roundabout, and the wheels are straight, so this car would block off any traffic on our right and allow us to go. 
Let's call this the exit position. Try to look well ahead to assess where other vehicles are coming from so you can anticipate where they are likely to go. If we take a look at this van, it's hard to see in the video but he is signalling right. Now the best time to enter a roundabout is when other traffic is leaving the roundabout into our exit. Because he is coming from this entrance on the left and signalling right, there's a 95% chance he's coming off at our exit. So get our approach speed right and select the correct gear and hold back until he's in the exit position. We now know he's turning off and blocking off any traffic on the right and we can go. Easiest blocking cars to spot and anticipate are the ones coming straight ahead from the opposite exit. Here we have two cars approaching from the opposite exit. Both good blocking cars if they go straight ahead. It's a car on the inside lane we need to be careful of here as he may turn right and might have forgotten his signal. Hold back, make sure to turn off and be ready to go. Look at the position of all these cars coming around the roundabout. Be ready to go for when you get a chance. Would you go now? Again here we have a bus approaching from the left and he's signalling right. What would you do now? Would you go or would you stop? Well, thanks for watching our video on roundabouts. It is only a rough guide for beginners or for drivers wanting a refresh. But hopefully you understand roundabouts a little better now and you will be able to put into practice what you have learned in your lessons. If you find this video useful, please click the like and subscribe buttons below to be notified of any future videos. Good luck with your driving and thanks for watching.